ground. Okay? And those that were persecuting us, when we were coming out with these videos, let's see how they keep talking because the reality is everything is happening exactly the way we told you it was going to happen. We told you a year and a half ago that they're going to say that it's because of you. It's because of you. The unvaccinated, those that have not taken the snake bite, it's your fault we can't go back to normal. And what do you see on the news right now? They're doing exactly what was prophesied. Saints, you'll know a tree by its fruit. But at a time like this, that's nothing to boast in. It, it's something to get, get prepared in. You understand? Because the reality is, we don't have a lot of time, saints. And there's a lot that has to be done. You have to take the fire of the Holy Ghost with you and spread it in your house, in your neighborhood, in your community, in your state, in your country. God has given my wife and I visions and dreams. Other prophets have prophesied over us, seen us in villages and huts. And so clearly we have other places we have to bring the gospel. And one thing you have to understand is we can't, we can't give all attention and time to America, but we're not, we're not caring about any other countries. Some of you, by the grace of God, may be called to be missionaries. I know there are growing leaders right now that we've been praying for them. Wherever it is that God will send us, we need you guys to pray for us. This is not a game. We need your prayers. You understand? Because there are some places in the world, it ain't like this. You understand? When we were overseas already, when we were in the streets, people started gathering. They were not rejecting the warning. They were like, yeah, I rebuked the devil. And they were in agreement. They were so hungry for the truth. But they would come up and they said, hey, you got to be careful. You can go to jail for this. This is too big of a crowd. They'll find out who the one starting it. They don't want to hear nothing. You understand what I'm saying to you? So we need your prayers. But somebody got to do it. Somebody has to go. There's a lot of countries that they're not over, overran by the mark of the beast. You understand that? When you look at different nations, you look at the UK. And shout out to all our brothers and sisters in the UK. We love you guys. But when you look at different countries, one country, 60% took the abomination. 70% took the abomination. But then you got other countries, 2%, 5%. You have to look and say, okay, this house is 70% burnt down. Not only that, but we've given the warning to this house. These houses only have a little flame. Why should we neglect them houses? So if you speak another language, if God has put it on your heart, reach out. Look for soldiers in the Spanish community. Tell them the truth. In African communities, Asian communities, Indian communities, we need the truth to be spread because we don't have a lot of time left. It's over. But at the same time, we got to rejoice. Our Savior is at the door. How awesome is that? Yes. And I want to say, that it ain't meant for every one of you to lose everything. That's not a test for everybody. So we don't claim that. But if you do lose everything, you didn't lose everything. Right. When my wife and I were doing ministry in the streets with $5 in our pocket, we had everything. We had the Lord. We had the Holy Ghost with us. We had a Bible in our pockets. And we had plenty of people in the streets bound by the power of darkness to talk to. But it's what you think is what is important in your life. What is something to you? So what we're going to do tonight, we're not going to go through all of that. And if you came here for that, I'm not mad at you because you want to know the truth. You want more about it. But I th listen, if, if you're not convinced by now of what this is, then probably there's nothing more I could say to you. Not to say I give up on anyone, 
But think about it like this. When the man cried out to Abraham and was like, let me go warn my brothers. He said, nah. They got the word. They got the prophets. Nope. You have to understand, saints, it's heating up. It's all, they're programming the minds of the people to look at you. This is the new, what they, you know, they called it the Holocaust. Right? This is the world Holocaust. This ain't just one group of people now. Now, people argue over who the, the Jews are. But I believe it's hard to just pinpoint. Because the reality is, God's people come in many Many shades, many hairstyles, many complexions. I believe that. I truly do. But God knows who his people is. So whoever they are. But you cannot deny the fact that Hitler did exist. That there were people that were killed. That were in what? Judaism, right? And look at how they were treated. They were dehumanized. They used the radio to brainwash the people to hate another group of people to the point where they were dehumanized. It was the same thing during the time of slavery. Where they would say black men, women, and children are not fully human. That's a lie from the pit of hell. But they needed to say that to people so they didn't feel bad when they did the evil they did. The very same thing is happening now. So prepare yourself. This is why you fast. This is why you study your word. You got to put this word in you. This is, this is the word of God. It's got to stay here. That way, if it is God's will for you to go to jail for refusing the abomination, you'll have the word in your heart. You'll be able to comfort yourselves and others with you. You understand? If you got to flee to a mountain, or if God sends you missionary and you just, hey, when I die, I die. Guys, listen. One thing I realized in 20 years of doing ministry work, the longer you spend with Christ, the less you fear death. Amen. Now, it's different if you're a husband or a wife, you have children, you have a concern for your spouse and children. You know what I'm saying? And you're like, Lord, Take them in the great translation. Amen? Take us all. Amen? Amen? But when it comes to you individually, the closer you get to Jesus Christ, death don't seem that scary to you. I'm not saying in a cocky way, like, I, you know, you won't tremble at all or get a little heart pumping if death was to come at someone's door. But you legit, I'm telling you, you don't really fear dying. When you wake up nowadays and you see all the evil in the world and how much they hate Jesus Christ and how the abomination is being pushed on the earth, you're like, Lord, I don't like this place. I'm here. I love your people. I want to try to bring the gospel to as many as possible, but this is not my world. You created this earth, but this is the God of this world. I hate this place. People, the, the evil in the place, technology and all of these things, and now they're closing in the, the, the walls. You understand? But God has a plan for you. He put a light in you. And if you as a light don't want to be in dark places, then what's the point of being light? Amen. Think about what I'm saying to you. If he gave you light, you got to go to the darkness. You can't just be around other light people all your life. You can have a room too bright, you know. Have you ever had a room too bright? You bought the wrong light bulbs and didn't know? Caught a tan in the kitchen. But you realize, wait a minute, why am I going to use eight light bulbs in the kitchen when I got ten rooms in this house? If you got ten rooms in the house, you, you just, okay, ten bedrooms, like you better have ten children. Right? But bring the light where it's needed. Bring the love of God where it's needed. Stop running from the mission God has given you. Because where there is no love, and if you got love, you should bring the love there. If they're not being warned about the gospel, you should bring the gospel there. So we're counting on you guys to pray for us. We're going to continue to warn people. We're going to continue to strive, to sacrifice, 
and give our life to Christ by telling y'all the truth and warning you of what's going on. Y'all don't know the emails we get, threats and all type of stuff. But you got to understand something. If Christ be for us, who could be against us? You understand? There's people wishing for my death right now. But see, I cannot die until God says so. And that's even if he says so. Because I might be able to get translated out of here. You might be able to get translated out of here. So no matter who wants you to die, it don't matter. Because they don't hold that power. Jesus Christ conquered death, hell, and the grave. You understand what I'm saying to you? So now let's get into the message. Oh, come on. Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's legit like six messages, y'all. So bear with me as I'm trying to figure out which ones to throw over the boat, if you know what I mean. Uh huh? Uh, I'm going to make them in the dinner table messages by the grace of God. Um, like, come on. Like, have you ever had, like, you don't want to sacrifice not one of them? Like, oh. Uh, Hmm? Oh, you already know I can't I can't leave that one out. I can't leave that one out, brother. Alright, y'all. Where I want to start tonight. Actually, y'all gonna laugh at a brother, but we were stuck in traffic for like two hours yesterday, right? And um literally I'm talking, you couldn't even move the car. It was like a parking lot. And I'm there and I'm like Hey, wait a minute. I said to my wife, I said, honey, you got a notepad up in here? You got a pen? God legit gave me a dinner table mess in the, in the traffic jam. <laughs> Glory to God. So what does that tell you? Don't complain. You know what I mean? Especially traffic. You know traffic. I, I don't know if you guys are like me. Are you the one that switches lanes every two minutes thinking something's going to mysteriously open up? You be looking like an idiot to everyone around. You're like, what is wrong with this guy? I'm like, yo, yo, let me in, let me in. And then I get out that lane and everybody's going. I'm like, oh, come on. <laughs> then you try to come back in and then it stops. You're like, you know what, I'm done. Let me just go ahead and write down these messages. And all glory to Christ. Amen. So let's go ahead now. We, we got to talk about something. This man okay lord how do i do this father god speak through me i thank you for this revelation and i pray lord god that their minds focus we bind all distractions in the name of yeshua jesus christ thank you for this time lord man we don't have enough time in the day father to come together what an amazing time just singing and praising and worshiping you lord god we're truly humbled. Amen. Y'all having a good time? Yeah. Amen. So, I want to I want to talk to y'all about something. You know, I was wondering why there's a lot of societies that deal with skeletons and bones, and you guys look. Keep it a hundred with you. We try our best. We don't know how they're going to set up the room and organize it. So sorry if you're having trouble seeing. Because everybody kind of see? Okay, amen. How, how about the audio? Can everybody hear good? Okay, praise God. How many of y'all have ever heard of skull and bones? They're not worthy of oh, over 30 seconds to talk about. Not during an amazing message like this. But I wanted to say that many prominent leaders and people come out of Skull and Bones, Yale University, y'all know the deal, right? But why is it Skull and Bones? Why do they go that route? You ever wonder that? Like, what is that really about? Well, I want us to talk about something tonight. I was there meditating and I'm going through these messages and the Lord said, I want you to do a study on skeletons skulls bones in the bible i got something to show you you know me i'm just are you serious lord right y'all get excited when god speak to you you should you should amen amen so what i want to talk about 
is in Genesis chapter 50. If we could go there. But do me a favor. Please don't be offended. Now some of y'all probably faster than me. But I'm not waiting for everybody. If I hear the flickering of 300 pages, I'm sorry. But if I wait for everybody for every scripture, we're not going to get two messages out of tonight. You see what I'm saying? So you can either write it down. If you got, if you got that, you got that, the fingers where you could go through the pages quick, then let's go. Amen? Y'all like, man of God, be quiet. And uh, I'm already there. All right. Ex, uh, Genesis chapter 50. Let's see what it says now. Oh, this is so good. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 25. It says, In the name of Yeshua Christ, and Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died being 110 years old and they embalmed him and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. And I'm like, wow, like you can look at it as simply just honor. They wanted to take his bones, you know, whenever they would relocate or whatever the case be. But I said, there got to be something deeper than this, though. There got to be something deeper than this. So go to Exodus chapter 13. Like I said, what I'm going to do is, instead of drawing out dinner table messages tonight, I'm going to give you like a decent dinner table fast food message. Is that fair? Just so that way we can get through more than one message. Some of y'all love fast food. You're like, oh, that's right on my alley. You call Uber like, yeah, I'd like to order a dinner table from the Lord message. Bring it now, please. Glory to God. Y'all ready? What does it say in, in 19? It says, And Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, for he had straightly sworn the, ch he had straightly sworn the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones away hence with you. Okay, so clearly Moses took the bones of Joseph with him, correct? But that's when, I, that's when it hit me. How many of y'all remember... In Jude, it says something very interesting. Go to Jude. Go to Jude chapter 20. <laughs> I'm just making sure y'all still there. And some of y'all was like, I'm there, brother. All right, Jude, let's go. All right, we're ready. Verse 9. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the... Yes, Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, like... Because I looked at this in two ways. We are the body of Christ. Could it be that Satan was fighting over the body of Moses being the people? That seemed logical to me. But then I was like, what if he really did want the actual body of Moses though? You know what I mean? Ultimately the bones. What is it about human bones? What is it? Why does the Bible talk about bones a certain way? Well, we're going to talk about this. I was, I was uh, in meditation and, and I found out. I want you to see this now. 2,000 years in the making, close to St. Peter's Basilica. A discovery that traces back to ancient Rome and early Christianity. In a church closed for 35 years, what may be bone fragments of St. Peter himself, unearthed by a worker and shown on Italian TV, 
perhaps placed here by an early pope to assert his authority at a time of division within Catholicism. Okay, so, like I said, I'm not watching you know, some of y'all ready to get some popcorn. Like, <laughs> how long is it? In two minutes, we shutting it down. But think about this logically. According to the, the Vatican, the Pope, they boast in having the bones of Peter. Now you got to keep it real. That's not far-fetched. I mean, where was he killed? Where were a lot of these apostles murdered? Martyred? But even just meditating on that, what is the significance? Why would they want to keep the bones of Peter? Right? This is interesting. Now we know that Roman Catholicism is not Christianity, right? But we also want to pray for the Catholics that they get saved. Catholic members, are, we don't want to look at them as enemies when we want to pray to get saved. But the actual religion, the hierarchy, all of that, the Luciferians, you understand the difference? But if you come across some old lady who's a Catholic, you know, like, I rebuke you. Tell her the gospel. You'll be surprised. She'll renounce Roman Catholicism and give her life to Christ. Amen? Amen. But I'm like, what is it about the bones of human beings? Did you know that, a, that bones can survive for thousands of years? Did you know that? In the right environment, they can survive for thousands of years. Did y'all know that? To me, that's, that's amazing, like, the way God created us. Okay. <laughs> All right, Lord. Go to Jeremiah chapter 20. Let's go. I'm there, are y'all? Let me find out. Verse 9. Let's see what it says. Let's go. Jeremiah 20 verse 9. Alright, here we go. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. What does it say? But his word was in my heart, as a burning fire shut up in my bones wait a minute pause so this fire of God was in Jeremiah's bones that's interesting go to 2nd Kings 13 who's going to get there We're going to start at verse 20 and go down. Like I said, if I get there, just, you know, it wasn't your day. You need to practice your page turning skills. I think some of y'all Bible is just humongous. <laughs> Catching cramps and people be laughing at my, my, you know what I'm saying, my little Bible, but I could sneak this anywhere. You see what I'm saying? Glory to God. Okay, let's see what it says. 2 Kings chapter 13. We're going to read verse 20 going down. And Elisha died. And they buried him. And the bands of the Moabites invaded the land at the coming in of the year. Are y'all ready for it? And it came to pass as they were burying a man that behold they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the what? The bones of Elisha. He revived and stood up on his feet. Oh. 
I can't do the walk away in this place, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do the hideaway. I'm gonna just. And it got a curtain, brother. Yeah. Get a curtain for the dinner table messages. So you're telling me that this dead corpse falls into a grave, hits the bones of the prophet, just. Where my wife at? My breath stink. Oh. <laughs> Dead for four days, brother. Your breath ain't gonna smell good. What is that? What was shut up in ah? What was shut up in the bones of the prophet that just by touching the bones brought another man back to <laughs> brought another man back to life. This is much better than going over something you already know. Amen. Amen. We glorify Jesus tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are y'all ready? It's about to get deeper. I mean, look, it, uh, I get it. If you guys want to end now and go find a diner, just let me know. <laughs> okay, I'm just testing y'all. <laughs> Some of y'all was kind of quiet. That ain't cool. <laughs> like, I was happy with deliverance. I mean, I see you on YouTube. It's cool. You did say you're doing the dinner table message. Leviticus 17, let's go. Actually, you know what? I'm going to quote that one just to save time. Why don't we do it that way? Certain scriptures I'll paraphrase, and you just write them down. Deal? So in Leviticus, it says that the life of a man is where it's in his blood oh <laughs> huh just read the whole chapter that way you get you know what I mean you get the whole thing so I'm reading it I told y'all look I'm not a scientist I'm not a doctor barely graduated school you feel me but I did graduate keep it real but you will get wisdom and God will teach you things. He's the greatest teacher, amen? I love him as a teacher. He's an awesome teacher. But as I'm there and he sent me to live in the and I'm like, wait. Have you ever had a Lord, what are you up to moment? Yes. Like, Lord, what are you up to? I truly believe Jesus loves showing off in a godly way. He loves to be like, but wait, there's more. Like an infomercial. Just, but wait, there's more. And you like, come on, are you serious? So I found out the reason why he led me to Leviticus about the life of a man being in his blood. Because it just so happens to be that your bones produce your blood. Your bones produce your blood. That's interesting, ain't it? It's called bone marrow. It's a spongy substance, right? So your bones produce blood, red bone marrow, but then you also have what? Yellow marrow. Yellow marrow stores fat. You see what I'm saying? That's when the diet wasn't working. He's like, look, I'm just big bounded. You need to chill with all of that. I got a lot of yellow marrow. You need to just back away. You got some yellow cupcakes too, though, brother. Trust, we can get, we can get help together. I think everybody up here got a stash spot in the house. Don't you lie. Let me check your couch. You got a little cupcake stash. Don't even tell your wife. Just, baby, I'm home. What, honey? I'm home. I'm just home. Got some coffee cakes behind the curtain. <laughs> so your bones produce the blood and store the fat. But I found that fascinating, though. <laughs> Someone go to Job 21. Let's get there quick. Oh, I love it. I love it. Job 21.
You gotta be, Job will run, you run right by Job, won't even know. How many of y'all have, have you ever had that day? You know the book, you know where it's at, but you just can't find it? You're like, wait, what? what? It's just boop, boop, skimming right by. You gotta take your time, amen? Job 21, is everybody there? Well, wait for me, hold on a minute. Tell the train to wait. Okay, we're gonna read verse 24. His breasts are full of milk, and his bones are moistened with marrow. That's interesting, ain't it? But what would be the odds that when it comes to marrow, God talks about bones. All right, let's go there. Isaiah 58, just real quick. I, I don't want to paraphrase that one. Isaiah 58. Verse 11, I'm reading it. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones. How would the old scriptures know that marrow, white marrow, stores fat back then? We know a lot of this, yes. That's true. We know it from technology. Well, we could go in and look and find out the details, but they didn't have that technology back then. Who here has ever eaten oxtail? Wagwan. Bless up my youth. It's a whole lot of oxtail lovers. <laughs> but wait a minute, that don't make you official. You, you, you're not genuine unless you suck the juice out the bones. <laughs> Raise your hands if you do that. Okay, y'all know the deal. Do you ask the chef to put extra gravy? You tell them to chill out on the rice? They wanna give you a big pile of rice with three pieces of ox. You like, girl, I've been coming here for eight weeks. <laughs> Don't you do me like that. Talk about, you want some more cabbage? I got a garden at home, you better stop. I don't got ox. I'm just messing with y'all. But the, there's, there's so much that bone, it keeps in, it's just, it's amazing. So the life of a man, a woman is in their, is in their blood, and the blood is in the bones. So technically, the bones preserve the life. It's where they produce. Oh, come on, man. This is so good. But there's a lot about bones, right? Because if you read in Genesis chapter 2, we're not going to go there because of time. You notice that he doesn't start off with flesh. He says, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. Because it started with the bones. You see? According to the word. How many of y'all remember the saying, bad to the bone? Remember that old song back in the day? Bad to the bone. But you see, the children of the devil know something. The occult knows something. You see what I'm saying? Because all through the word of God... There's a warning. Say it with me. There is a warning. Go to Job chapter 20. Let's be quick. All right, here we go. Job 20. We're going to read verse 11. Look what it says. His bones are full of what? Of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Ooh. It's almost like it's a way of holding a record against those that die in sin. It's preserved in their bones, their sin. You see? Now, because of time, I had like probably five scriptures for each example. 
but I think one is good enough. Lord willing, I'd either release this or do a dinner table message. I'll give y'all two and a half, Lord willing, on that. Is that a deal? But you get the point, right? That bones, the, the sin goes into the bones, huh? Did you know that they say that pound for pound, bones are stronger than steel and concrete? At least that's what they say. That, look, they be doing mad uh, statistics. I'm just telling you what scientists and people that do it say. But interesting enough, the Bible speaks of how the bones are strong like iron. Write down Job chapter 40. We're not going to go there. Things that are, not, not that they're less important, but certain things we're just going to have you write down. We got to bring to the, we got to bring it all together. But how many of y'all know that there's rottenness that can enter the bones? Even it says, envy, the Bible says, rots the bones. Did you know that? When you're envious of, of other people and jealous of, of their success, it, it rots the bones. Right? But it also says in Proverbs 16 that pleasant words are as honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones. Amen. So it goes on and on and on. Y'all remember the revelation about how, you know, we are the temple of God, right? And how you have 12 ribs on each side. We've known this for a while, so you should already know this. And within that is your heart. And how in heaven, there are 24 elders that surround the throne of God. How awesome is that, that God created your body to be a replica of what it is in heaven? That's, that's amazing. And of course, many of you know that the right hand has how many bones? 27. Jesus is the right hand of God and it just so happens to be 27 books in the New Testament. Do you think that's a coincidence? I don't believe in coincidences. I just want to throw that out there because we're on this, this fellowship about bones. But you have to ask yourself the question though. Why is it... <laughs> why is it Jesus Christ of Nazareth had a specific prophecy? that not one of his bones would be broken. Oh, wow. oh yeah, look. Come on. God is so good. Not one of his bones would be broken. Y'all want to read it? Let's go. John 19. Who's going to get there? I'm there. Look. God bear witness. Chapter 19 right there. I told you these little Bibles. You know what I mean? Hide it in a boot. You know what I'm saying, soldier? Come on, y'all big Conan Bibles. Hurry up. You got the big joints. Verse 36, let's read it together. It says, For these things were done that the scriptures should be fulfilled. What? A bone of him shall what? not be broken interesting isn't it why was that why is that significant why was that even brought out <laughs> I want to do it Lord, but I just, I just want to go at least one more scripture write down Psalms 34 that's where one of the references you can read that on your own time but where I want to go is Numbers 9. Let's see if we can get there. Okay, I'm there. I'm there, right? Hold on. 
Oh, you no, know you didn't. She beat me. Hey, okay. Numbers nine, y'all ready? You know what this conference is going to do? Make you want to turn the pages better. You've been looking at your fingers on the plane. Just, I rebuke you. You played me in front of everybody. Don't be rebuking your fingers. You need them. Bless you, fingers. Amen. Teach my hands to war and my what? Fingers to fight. Amen. In Jesus' name. Fight with them pages. Can I get an amen? That's right. Y'all ready? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. They shall leave none of it unto the morning, nor what? Break any bone of it. According to all the ordinance of the Passover, they shall keep it. Isn't that interesting? So to be a foreshadow for Christ, they, they, they couldn't break the bones. Y'all following? Y'all seeing this? Well, if the life of a man is in his blood... And the blood is produced in the bones. Go, go with me to Acts, y'all. I, I know, I'm, I'm acting up. Go to Acts. Go to Acts chapter 20. Oh, we're going to talk about it today, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. Acts chapter 20. Amen. Look at what it says now. Y'all didn't I mean, come on, y'all. Mind you, can I get a raise of hands? How many gotta get baptized? Oh, oh, come on. Y'all saying, woo! I'm like. <laughs> Jesus. Thank God for growing leaders. Because the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna have like 10 growing leaders lined up. And I'm going to stand right there. We're going to be a part together of every baptism. Ten at a time. We'll be able to get it done, have a sentimental moment, and you get baptized into the Lord. Amen? Amen. For real, it seems like everybody raised their hand. <laughs> Some of y'all get baptized every time you come here. You need to cut it out. Man of God, I don't know. The water was too warm. You know Brother Tim. He got that heated pool. It, does that count? Because if it don't, I got, I got a towel. You see what I'm saying, brother? Come on, man. No, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so joyful for y'all, man. But look what it says, though. We, we are, oh, chapter 20. Book, put the stones down. Just. We're going to go to verse 28. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves. And to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of who? God. Who? God. Which he had purchased with his own blood. Wait a minute, pause. I thought Jesus wasn't God. It says right there that God bought it with his own blood. And if you're going to tell me that God is spirit, then who are they talking about? Son of God. That is awesome. But wait a minute. Pause. Why did y'all let it go over your head? If the blood of God was in the body prepared for Christ, the bones couldn't be broken because you can't break the life of God. Amen. 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 Too much oxtail, a little Jamaican accent came out. I'm like, you can't. You can't break. Y'all ready for it? So here I am, I'm in meditation. And you ever, you ever have God talk to you about something and you know it ahead of time? And you searching it up, you're like, I know it, I know it, I know it. I know what I'm about to find out. And then you find out and you just like, Lord, you did it again. That's got to be one of his names in heaven. He did it again. He's awesome, isn't he? 
So I'm doing my research on bones. Like you should have seen me at the kitchen table just watching like fun science facts <laughs> videos on bones. And it just so happens to be, I can't, I can't Lord. I, this is so, <laughs> it takes, are y'all ready for this? Glory be to God. You're like, yeah, glory to God, but just tell me. Just, I know him glory, he gets it all, but tell me. It takes, brother, sister, it takes 30 years for your bones to reach maximum capacity. It just so happens to be that God waited 30 years to start his ministry. Wow. Ooh. Come on, man. I'm sweating. This fire in my bones. Y'all got fire in your bones tonight or what? Yeah. Amen? Amen. But of course, you know the Lord, but wait, there's more. Has some more to give. He's like, why don't you look up the best type of food for bones? I'm like, okay. Probably something I'm not going to want to eat. Like, you know, spinach with some Brussels sprouts and... Who said, who said, who dare say? Oh, the, the, you're vegetarian. Shout out. Everybody ordering stuff. He's like, look, I just, you got corn? Salt it up, bring it here. Love you, brother. But I found out that the number one food, legit, go look it up. Give it like the law of five. Like look up, you know, the average. Okay, that way you'll know what I'm telling you is the truth. It just so happens to be that the best food for bones to bring vitamin D, y'all heard of vitamin D, right? It's fish. And I'm like, wait, pause, Lord, you liked fish. Like, Jesus was a fish eater. That's why I try to tell Christian vegetarians, I'm like, you don't eat fish? Nope, don't eat nothing. Bruh, your Lord ate fish. Like, shout out to my wife saying she can cook fish. She'll make that salmon slamming. You feel what I'm saying? Man. But salmon, trout, and li uh, fish liver oils are the best for your bones. And right there, I mean, all y'all already know. I don't have to go to the scriptures. Remember, Jesus said, you got any fish? He was proving to them. He ate it. He rose from the dead and was like, where the salmon at? <laughs> right? How good is God? So there's too many of these instances where it's just... It hits you, you know what I mean? you just like, this is amazing. Mm. Fun fact, I got that from my son Simba. He'd be like, hey dad, a fun fact. I'm like, fun what? <laughs> fun fact. I'm like, what? He's like, fun fact. You know, he hit me with some knowledge. Did you know that your human skeleton completely regenerates every 10 years? And I, yeah, like completely replaces itself every 10 years. So every year, 10% of your skeletal structure replaces itself. So every 10 years, it's, a, it's entire. And you think of the regenerating of the Holy Ghost and how he renews you, and, right? But think about how your walk is as you go from year to year to year. As you grow and you are being regenerated. You see what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, come on, Lord. Who gonna beat me to Hebrews 4? Let's go. On your, you ready? Go. Hebrews 4. Glory to God. Oh, oh, oh man. Y'all got sharp in less than an hour. Amen. Chapter 4, verse 12. Let's read it. For the word of God is quick and powerful. Sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and what? Marrow. 
and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Are y'all seeing it? But then, I'm thinking, okay, Lord, I remember there was a time where you said something very interesting. I want y'all to go to Matthew chapter 23. Yeah. Y'all there? Amen. Okay, go to verse 27. Look at what our Lord and Savior said. He said, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited tombs, which indeed appear beautiful on the outside, but are within full of dead men's bones. And I know that had a spiritual meaning behind it, but I just wanted to know if the whore of Babylon, if maybe Jesus was also speaking literal, prophetically. Are y'all ready for it? And mystery epithetic. What happened to that 15-year-old daughter of a Vatican worker who vanished more than three decades ago? A tip led her family and authorities to a Vatican City property and today, thousands of unmarked bones were recovered underground. ABC's Will Reed is at the Vatican. Tonight, new clues. Yeah, I hear that. Thousands of bones are underneath the Vatican. On the outside, this Babylonian system looks clean, but inside is dead men's bones. So not only was he meaning a spiritual sense, but I truly believe he was prophetically warning us about the end days false church huh oh but listen it goes deep though because in the Vatican right look at what they got I want y'all to see this look at that they have catacombs in, in, in Rome Completely designed with thousands of human bones and skeletons, skulls, all of that. And, and what's creepy is how this guy describes his time there. He's like, it was amazing. As I walked through the chapel of skulls and... Let me fast forward a little bit so y'all can see what it is instead of the back of her head. Look at this. Watch this. Come on. Look at that. All on these walls is nothing but human, human skeletal remains. M many different rooms. And they all got names. Look at a little baby on the ceiling. Young child. So yes or no, we're not going to deal with... Look at some of y'all. Like, can you send me the link, brother? You don't need the link. But let's keep it real, though. Wasn't Jesus speaking prophetically as well, though? question is were they hiding these bodies because they were doing things they were not supposed to be doing if you know what I'm saying so of course I'm giving you the fast food version of it which is completely fine because we got a lot of word to get into by the grace of God amen Jesus Christ's name but I want you to think about this for a moment when Jesus Christ was crucified, go to Matthew 27. Let's go. Who could get there? It's, look, it's two pages away. Calm down. Like, you're like, I beat you, bro. I'm like, it's two pages. Y'all ready? Look at what it says. We're going to read verse 31 going down. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off from him and put his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by the name of him, they compelled to bear the cross. And when they were come unto the place called what? Golgotha, that is to say, the place of a skull. Oh. Come on, guys. 
Jesus Christ was symbolically conquering death. You see? I mean, he literally conquered death, but even the place where he died... You ever hear like in vampire movies, they say, put a stake through the chest or... Anything, because God said, it shall bruise thy heel, but you shall what? Crush his head. Did you catch it now? Jesus crushed the skull of Golgotha. If you think about it, it's like the cross went into the ground. Bang! And crushed the skull. His head was crushed. But there you go with the skull, right? Where am I going? There you go with the skull. The valley of the dry bones. Which one of y'all thought of that when we was going through these words? That's right. Ezekiel 37, let's go. I almost opened right up to it. And if anybody, if that happens to anybody, please let it be known. If you open directly up to a scripture, let it be known. And if any of y'all didn't bring a Bible, I'm sure you will next time. You was expecting 30,000 Bibles stacked up. No, you got to get, how many times I told y'all on the phone, get a Bible that's for you. Say it again. Oh, he, all, he ain't no joke, man. He be bringing boxes of Bibles. Appreciate it. And appreciate everything y'all do. Amen? But here we are, the Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley which was full of what? Bones. And caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Mm. You better remember that. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh, Lord God, thou know. Again he said to me, Prophesy upon these bones. And say unto them, O oh, you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith, wow, it, it hits you differently now, don't it? Keep it real, when you read it now, don't it hit you differently? It hit me different. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I, will, so I prophesied, and... As I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin was covered them above, but there was no breath in them. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, Thus saith the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. Now watch this. So I prophesied, and as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood upon their feet, and they were an exceedingly great army. Are y'all hearing this? Think about this logically. He's bringing bone to bone. And I was meditating on this. And I said, well, we're the body of Christ. Right? Paul said, you are many members, right? He was on the outside. He was talking about the surface, like eyeballs, ears, nose. What would you want to be? Would you rather be a nose or ear? Would you rather hear or smell? Yeah. Hear? Yeah. What about you, brother? Would you rather be the mouth or the eyes? That's a tough one, right? He's like, well, if I eat the mouth, how am I going to eat after the fast? I mean, <laughs> I ain't going to just look at the food. <laughs> right? But check this out. The bones also, because you got to look past what Paul was saying and go deeper into it. No offense, Paul. I love you. I, I can't talk to him, but Lord, tell him I love him and no offense to him. But you go deeper. We're also the body and the bone structure. 
But sister, what brings bones together? What holds them together? No. Huh? The ligaments, right? Is that what it's called? Ligaments, right? Thank you. I was, I was meditating. I'm like, to me, symbolically, I seen the Holy Ghost there. That the Holy Ghost holds us to... Ah. He holds us together like the ligaments. He brings one bone and another bone and says, now y'all get along. You need each other. Oh, that's so good. Right? But look at it this way. We're in the last hour. Notice that these bones were dry. I want you to see something. Come on, where that? And a lot of scriptures that I'm kind of have to skip over. Proverbs 17, 22. Look at what it says. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. So you can see what happened to these bones. Their spirit was broken. You see? There's other scriptures too, but we leave it at that. But in this last hour, you think it is a coincidence that as we're, hallelujah, praise the Lord, and we're marching. Like an army. Hallelujah, hallelujah,
the scriptures too, but we leave it at that. But in this last hour, you think it is a coincidence that as we're hallelujah, praise the Lord, and we're marching like an army. Jesus Christ brought together an army when he called the disciples. They became apostles and fire spread everywhere they went. And the more faster they tried to kill them, the faster they kept what? Growing. And I realized something about bones. Bones can break, but they, they, they just have a way of, look, just throw a cast on them, he'd be all right. Bones regrow, right? And, oh, I didn't know that. And stronger, thank you, sir. Notice that God left the bones because the life starts in the bones. But see, we got to go back to somewhere because how many of y'all know that you got to die daily? How many of y'all know to carry a cross means you took on the sentence of death? Come on now. Amen. Love you. You took on the sentence of death. It wasn't a fast mistake to carry your cross, sister. If someone put a cross on you, you'd be like, oh, that's messed up. Because you know, when you get to the end of where you're going, you get, you're going on that cross. One thing I love about the whole symbolism and the reality of carrying your cross is every day you're reminded you got to die. Think about that logically. Every day, let's say you're going on a journey and after 30 days, when you get to your destination, you have to die. The cross keeps you calm and balanced in a sense. Because you, you, you get to a place in your life where you just give up. Not on God, you give up on the world. You give up on fighting for your own, oh well, that's good. You give up on fighting for your own. Remember Jesus says, those that fight for their life shall what sister? They shall lose it. If I woke up every morning, there was a literal cross there. I'm like, huh, day 15. Every time I look at that cross, I'm gonna be like, man, I'm about to die soon. But at some point, you just settle it in your heart. You're just like, you know what, I'm not afraid anymore. By like day 25, you're gonna be chilling. Now don't get me wrong, when you look up at the hill, you're gonna be trembling a little bit. That's human nature. You know what I'm saying? We're still in the flesh, even though we're not supposed to walk in the flesh, but we got a what? A flesh body. Right, brother? So we got to overcome that. But that carrying that cross, it, it balances it out. Yes, brother? Could it be like in the upper room when Jesus Christ brought his disciples together, he was bringing his bones together, that's why the fire fell. Hey, come on, come on, brother. It's brother five scriptures ahead of me. I appreciate that. You can't, you can't, look, you can't take that brother to the movies. He'll tell you the whole movie on the way to the movies. Just, in the end, the end goes like this. Yeah, brother. Huh? Thank you, brother. You keen, brother. Laptop was ready to go. Right? So that was coming. But my brother brought it out super quick. But I love that. Because it shows me that you're growing. Amen. You have a gift. So when Jesus Christ was on the earth, he was gathering the bones. You see? And what is that wind? Come on, y'all talk to me. The Holy Spirit moves upon the dry bones. Amen. Right? But remember that it is a process. It says sinews and skin and flesh and muscle. and So you have to be patient. Because you stand up as an exceedingly great army. But if you're just bones, you're not going to be that strong. You need to wait. You need to pray. You need to fast. You got to wrestle with principalities and powers to develop the muscle that go. Ah. You need muscle to wrestle. Right? So this whole thing about I die daily. The Bible says, mortify your members. So I w as I was meditating on this, yeah, we have to do it. Let's just go back. This is how we're going to end this message. Are y'all ready for it? 
I want you to go back to 2 Kings 13. Back to 2 Kings 13. We're going we to finish this up so we can do the prayer and move on to the next message. Yes. Oh, that's so good. Thank you, brother. Milk for the bones and meat for the muscles. That's why when we first give our life to the Lord, we desire the sincere milk. Oh, come on. That was good, brother. What a, I mean, it's not God so good. How do you get a message like this from bones? Everybody's so fascinated with secret society. Skull and bones this. Who cares? What is it? Oh, his word was like a fire in my bones. Can you imagine that? That's confirmation. Thank you, sister. Wow. But could it be that the children of the devil were letting you know that Satan is also raising up some nasty, stank bones? We'll leave that alone. Y'all ready for it? Second Kings 13, are y'all there? Verse 21 again. And it came to pass. Oh, I love it. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Just take a moment. Say, thank you, Jesus Christ. <laughs> when they were burying a man, that behold, they spied a band of men. And they cast a man into the tomb of Elisha. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Now, a lot of times in the word of God, Jesus is called the greater. The greater Solomon, he said, is here. The greater Jonah is here. You ever heard Jesus say that? In fact, we have a message called um, the return of Moses, I think it is. Watch it if you haven't. So I was thinking about this. Okay, check this out. That's how we're going to wrap it up. What was I telling you? You got to die daily, right? A lot of y'all wasn't paying attention to where the dead body fell into. The body fell into a grave. You see, in order for you to touch the bones of the Messiah and get activated and be resurrected, you got to die. Ah, you got to die first. The only way you can touch the bones of Christ and receive life is if you die first. Because his bones are waiting in the grave. Ay, 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 ay. Not literally. He resurrected. But it's symbolic. It's spiritual. That if you want the resurrection power of Christ, you first got to die and fall into the grave. You got to die to self. You got to die to the world. And, 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 and it's a process too. But once you're fully dead and they drop you into that pit, as soon as you hit the bones of Christ, you're back up. Hallelujah. As a new creature. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now hold on before you get mad at me and say, man of God, why did you just snatch me out of my comfortable seat watching that conference video on the mystery of skull and bones and bring me right to your dinner table for a one-on-one? -on -one? I was having fun with the other people. Listen, I'm going to have you right back. Okay, you're going to go right back to that conference room and watch the rest of the video. But I want to explain to you the reason why I added this video in. We had over 650 people at this conference. It was so amazing. The praise and worship was so epic. And uh, we just want to say we love all of y'all. We really love every single one of you. And we thank you for being by our side in this fight in this last hour. Stand firm. Keep the whole armor of God on because the king... Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua the Messiah, is at the door. The reason I have you at this dinner table is because between praise and worship alone, it took up more than half the conference time. And then on top of that, deliverance. You want to talk about miracles and things happening, like all glory to Christ. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. Even after the conference, there were still miracles happening. People being healed, babies being healed, all types of infirmities and things coming off of people. And Jesus Christ once again faithfully showed up. 
but it took a lot of time okay and originally i had a plan to do like at least four full serving size messages but you know it, it's god's timing not ours it's his will not ours and it just didn't work out that way i didn't have a chance to do the full message to this one or the other one in fact i was planning on preaching multiple messages but it's okay so i just needed to explain to you why i snatched you out of your seat in the conference room digitally and brought you right to the dinner table and besides it's been a while i think a quick little one-on-one -on -one with you is a good thing i wanted to give you some revelations and other things pertaining to this message that i didn't have time to talk about at the conference everybody that came to the conference knew i let them know and if you're watching and you were in the conference you know exactly what i'm saying that we don't have time for the full message because time was taken doing other things which is great okay everything from praise and worship to the deliverance to the baptisms afterwards like it's just such an amazing time with all y'all my wife and i we had an amazing time with y'all but here i am i want to give you the rest of this message some of y'all like man of god i get it like hurry up like <laughs> all right here we go now for that just because of that attitude i'm gonna step from my teacher cup that my wife got me <laughs> i had to do it i had to do it but anyways here we go in the name of Yeshua Jesus Christ. I pray that those watching this video are having an amazing are having an amazing time, Lord. That they're seeing how mighty you are. And every time your word goes forth, it changes us. Please forgive us, Lord. Wash us in your blood as we eat the rest of this meal at the dinner table and go back to the conference video. We just want to give you all the glory and the praise and the honor. Lord Jesus, because your word goes forth as a light unto our feet, health to our bones, to convict us, correct us, encourage us, faith comes by the hearing of the word of God. And of course, just like the conference video you were watching, I'll be your waiter. The only difference is in that conference video you're watching, that's a banquet hall. We all ate, hundreds of us ate together. The amazing meal cooked by the king of the kitchen. I, I thought you knew. Are you new to the channel? Because if you are, you know, we got to do it now. Jesus Christ is not just the Lord of Lords. He's not just the king of kings. He's the chef of all chefs. Can I get a name, man? And he's the king of the banquet hall. Can I get another amen? I'm your waiter. I'm going to give you the rest of these nuggets. I want to recap. I want to go over some important points that we didn't get to talk about. Now, let's get this part out of the way. I want to go back to exposing the secret societies, why they're doing this. And then we're going to get into the amazing part of this dinner table message. And then... I'll bring you right back to the conference video for you to finish it out. And uh, we'll see you soon at another message, Lord willing. All right, so here we go. Why, as you've already learned from the earlier part of the video, why does the Vatican boast in having the bones of Peter? The Vatican put on public display bone fragments believed to be the remains of St. Peter, the founding pope. Could it be that they're boasting in authority and power, knowing that there is an anointing that resides in the bones of apostles and prophets? I mean, remember, we talked about how they carried the bones of Joseph and how the devil tried to fight for the body of Moses. You remember this. We don't have to get into it. You already learned that. What was it? Was it a respect thing that they wanted to bury the bones of Joseph properly in another place that they would end up settling in, as you know, the promised land? Or was it something deeper? Huh? Because again, remember in Jeremiah, it was like a fire shut up in my bones, right? So we see that the anointing, the epicenter of the anointing is in the bones. 
Wow. So think of that. Could this be something? Because remember, the children of the devil, whether the popes, uh, Hitler, and the list goes on, they're all into the occult. They believe in supernatural power too. Just know that. But they believe in demonic anointing, you could kind of call it, right? You have the anointing of God. But there are anointings that the devil will give people. Unclean anointing. Just like they put their faith in unclean things, you see? So they are boasting and having the authority that they killed many of the men of God. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. Was not Paul sent to Rome to die? So I just want you to meditate on that, okay? And then, of course, we're talking about why is it all of the occult? Now, we'll, we'll first start by talking about the Skull and Bones Secret Society in Yale. Many presidents have been Skull and Bones members, the Bush family and John Kerry, and the list goes on. But did you know that in the Skull and Bones ritual, they have to lay in a coffin? Huh? Could it be that the children of the devil know some of this mystery that God is allowing me to give to you? Okay? But they know it in the other way, in the twisted way, the perverted way, serving their God, the devil. He's called the God of this world. Remember, we've already went over how that prophet's bones was in the grave. And when the dead body touched the prophet's bones, the body came back to life. Think about this logically. They lay in a coffin, which is like a dying thing, like in a grave per se. And they're called skull and bones. You see? So the same way that we die to the world, and we die daily according to the Bible, and we're dead to our own will, is the same way they declare to be dead to Christ, dead to God. They lay in a coffin and proclaim and declare that they are dead to God. And that is how Satan gives them their power and their bones, demonic power, witchcraft power that resides in their filthy bones. Ah. Feels good to be able to do a walk away. It was very difficult to do a walk away during this conference. But I want you to think about what I mentioned in the conference video earlier. Um, that saying bad to the bone, right? And all through the industry, it was used in shows, movies, music, you name it. And I know we went over Job, but there's another one too. If you go to Psalms 38, just real quick now. I'm not going to keep you. I, I'm trying my best to get you back to the, to the conference, okay? So you can finish up the video and do the prayer, amen? But if you go to Psalms 38... If, if you go to Psalms 38, verse 3, There is no soundness in my flesh because of thine anger, neither is there any rest in my bones because of my sin. You see, there's that connection again. Remember we read earlier in Job. I want you to go to Ezekiel with me, chapter 32, just real quick. We'll do one more. All right, I'm very tempted to keep y'all for an hour and a half. I ain't gonna front. <laughs> I ain't gonna front. But I'm gonna hurry up. I'm gonna get you there now. I'm gonna get you back to that conference video. Ezekiel 32. I want you to see verse 27. And they shall not lie with the mighty that are fallen of the uncircumcised, which are gone down to hell with their weapons of war. They have laid their swords under their heads, but their iniquity shall be upon their bones. Are you seeing this? So there is this sin that resides in the bones. And I believe we're tapping into why these people in the occult, the children of the devil, love skull and bones. Not just that secret society, uh, but just think of the vast amounts of occult groups 
witchcraft, voodoo, santeria, magic, how they operate rituals using bones, bones from humans, bones from animals. What is it about the bones? Well, we're starting to find out now, aren't we? I want you to think about the different things they do in rituals, right? They have voodoo chimes, bone magic, reading bones, right? You ever heard the term, throw me a bone? What about bag of bones? There are witches that would have a bag of bones and they would do rituals for people and throw the bones down and read the bones to divine upon the person. Um, a lie, really. So think about this logically. And again, I don't want to dwell too much on this aspect of it because if you clicked on this video to know about the mystery of the Skull and Bones uh, Secret Society and you are more interested in that than knowing the mystery of the Skull and Bones of the Messiah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. You call it clickbait all you want, okay? I'm not lying, am I? I just didn't tell you what the mystery of the Skull and Bones was going to be about, okay? But you're here. You better stay. You need to know the truth about Christ and what happens to us when we receive the Holy Ghost. Are you having fun? Are you enjoying this? I hope you are. So now we're talking about this. There's other things too. For example, skeletons in the closet. You ever heard that term? When someone hides something bad, it's a skeleton in the closet. Why the closet? I mean, think about it. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6 commands us to go into the closet and shut the door and pray to the Father in secret. Right? So there's that parallel between the children of Christ, the children of the Almighty, and the children of the devil. Right? You think of, uh, I got a bone to pick. I mean, there's so many. What about wishbones, though? Have you ever done wishbones? You need to renounce it. You need to repent. A lot of these things have occult origins from paganism. In fact, it was a form of fortune telling. Chicken Ouija bones. Okay. I wrote this down. In ancient Italy, it was used as divination, an oracle having divine powers when they would break the wishbone off a chicken or a bird or whatever the case be, whatever bird it was. Think of the tooth fairy. This has pagan origins, witchcraft origins. Now, there's many different uh, stories, but make no mistake about it, it's unclean. You need to repent from getting involved with all of these things. But why the bones? Why the teeth? Now, if you think about it logically, I don't know if the teeth are considered bones. I have to double check that, but it's still significant. In fact, there was a dentist one time, the Lord told my wife and I to leave them alone. The Lord revealed that they were into the occult. And uh, my wife and I, when we went to this uh, dentist office one time, or whatever, like a checkup, a cleaning, whatever the case be for the little ones or whatever, and they would have incense. You could smell it lightly in the air. And they didn't realize they slipped up and said a little too much. And they would do, uh, you know, certain meditations and rituals in the morning before they opened up their office. Now, if you're a dentist, I'm not accusing every dentist of being in the occult or witchcraft. But there's a lot of dentists that get involved with the occult. And if you have a tooth uh, abstracted or certain things like that, uh, if you don't ask for that tooth, don't assume they're just going to discard that tooth. They can use it in a ritual. And that's exactly what God showed my wife and I. And we left that dentist office. We went to another one. Um, when we had a procedure done, we wanted what was, uh, what was left behind. We said, uh, we want that tooth. So, <laughs> and they looked at us very shocked. But we were like, uh-uh, we want that. So it's not a game, y'all, okay? There's a lot of evil that goes on in the occult world, and they use bones. And now you're starting to see why, because we're realizing that if the life of a man is in his blood, and the bones produce the blood cells, if the bone marrow is producing the blood, well then, excuse me, I'm burping at the dinner table, forgive me. Um, if that's the case, then clearly you see why. 
Did you know that bones speak according to the Bible? Now you might say, well, I don't mean that literally. But if you read Psalms 35, just real quick. I'm trying to be fast, but this ain't easy, okay? And it's about to heat up. It's, I'm telling you, this is amazing. But Psalms 35, look what it says now. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee. You see? Uh, the blood cries out, does it not? So if the blood cries out, according to Genesis and Hebrews, remember, uh, the blood of Abel cried out, right? And if blood cries out and it's it's produced within the bones, then clearly bones can cry out, right? So there's something significant here. But let's go ahead. I know I breezed through the occult aspect of this, but I think that's good to do. I mean, we're going to spend an hour talking about bone magic and voodoo and how they operate using bones. Or should we get to what is important to us? Because we know that as manifested sons of God, you brothers and sisters out there that believe in Jesus Christ and you're following after him, you're dying daily. There's nothing they can do to prosper against you. There's no curse, no spell. There's no weapons formed against you that can prosper if you're in the Lord and you're walking right and there's no open doors. Okay, That's another message called standing in the door. I'm so excited to give that to y'all. Uh, one of the local branches that just recently opened up in Alabama. Shout out to Alabama. We love y'all. The message that was preached there called Standing in the Door was so amazing. All glory to Christ. Uh, but that's another day, another time, okay? But the reality is, is I don't want to harp on that. I just wanted you to think and meditate. Have we tapped into why they do it? Why does the skull and bones lay in a coffin? Why are they called skull and bones? I mean, they have literally a skull when they take their pictures. What is that? Not to mention, not to mention the numbers 322. Two. Well, I want to show you something. In Genesis chapter 3, Verse 22, and the Lord God said, behold, man has become as one of us to know good and evil. You see, I truly believe this is why they have three, two, two. They can say all they want. Children of the devil lie just like they father, just like they're lying on the news about everything going on, if you know what I mean. So, yes, I believe we're tapping in to expose why they do that, why they lay in a coffin, because they're boasting and touching the bones of the enemy per se, not literally, okay, don't take that literal, but they believe that if they die to God, lay in that coffin, right, that they will receive their anointing, their demonic anointing, their powers of witchcraft and sorcery from the devil, the same way we tap into Christ and we die to the world and we die to our own will and we receive the anointing of Jesus Christ, that fire shut up in our bones. Think of the book of Acts. Think of when the fire fell on them in the upper room. The fire went into their bones. Wow. Okay. This is amazing. Just a couple to throw out there. We're not really going to go into and read because I got to get you back to the main message. But Samson in Judges 15 destroys literally like at least a thousand with the jawbone of a donkey. Now, I think that's very interesting because the jawbone is like represents talking and speaking. And I believe there's a revelation there how we conquer our enemies with the word of God, right? However, there's that bone again, right? And it's the jaw. Uh, you know, <laughs> thinking about it, that must have been a jaw-dropping scene to watch. <laughs> jaw-dropping, get it? Jaw-dropping, never mind. It's a corny jaw. Hey, what can you do? You know what I'm saying? In the world, you can say all type of jokes. When you get saved, you know your jokes are limited. You see what I'm saying? I thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> Take another sip. So, with that being said, um, Eve came from the rib of Adam, right? We're not going to read that. You already know that. What I want y'all to do, though, is in the comment section, let's have fun as a community, okay? 
any meditation, revelations that you get when you're meditating, something that God reveals to you, I want you to put it in the in the comment section, okay? Let's have fun. Are we not a family in Christ? Those that are bought by the blood of the Lamb, those that love Jesus Christ, are we not family in Christ? Well, let's treat each other like family. Let's encourage one another in the comment section. Let's speak life. Amen. So if you find other scriptures that I might not have mentioned, or I know there's others like a, a man that wanted to be buried with the bones of, of another man of God, a prophet and things like that. But we do have to, I have to get you back to the main message. So I want you to tell me, why do you think, why do you think God chose the rib of Adam? To create Eve. She was created from a bone. Let that sink in. That's amazing. What about Jacob's hip in Genesis when he wrestled with God? Right? I want you to meditate on that. Tell me what you could come up with. Huh? Why is that so significant? But we got to get to it now. Why is it now back to 2 Kings? When they dropped that dead body into the tomb of Elisha and that dead body touched his bones, he rose up, right? And we know that Jeremiah 20 verse 9 says there was a fire shut up in my bones. So clearly that anointing remains in the bones. And I believe that's why the wicked ones, the Vatican and the secret societies, they try to keep certain bones of the martyrs and people they have killed, apostles and prophets, to try to have this occult power. But of course, they're blinded by the devil. Okay? No different than Hitler traveled the earth looking for occult objects. He literally was looking for what they call the spear of destiny. The spear that pierced our Lord's side. He wanted that spear. He believed it would give him power over the entire earth. That the, these people are completely insane to the point where they're perfectly insane. I'm not going to get into that. But so now, what is it about the bones? Now, as we're bringing the two together and we're bringing the message from the conference and this dinner table message in with it. We're now realizing that the grave represents falling in to that tomb, represents dying to the world, dying to your own will, right? And once you completely flatline, once you completely die to the world and die to self, you touch the bones of the Messiah. Not literally. Jesus isn't still in some grave somewhere in a tomb. I don't need no Pharisees trying to twist my words like they love to do. These people are cowards. But the reality is, symbolically, you touch Jesus Christ and you gain that anointing. You touch him, you get that anointing. Remember when the woman touched the hem of his garment and virtue left him and went into her? How much greater is Jesus Christ than the prophet Elisha? That when we symbolically die, that's what it means to fall into that grave, to fall into that tomb. Then we receive the anointing of the Messiah. He, he blesses us. And I was thinking about that. In the New Testament, we are like walking Elishas. We're dead to the world. We're dead to self. We have died to the point where we have taken upon ourselves the mantle, the anointing of Jesus Christ. Remember... He passed it on to his bride and he said, everything I've done, you shall, I'm about to do the walk away. If you don't know what that is, you better find out. He said, everything I've done, you shall do an even greater. Why, Jesus? Because I'll be putting my power in your bones and I'll be dwelling on the inside of you. I'll be driving you around like a car. You will be my Uber bringing me where I need you to bring me, says the Lord. How awesome is that? So if you think about it, instead of waiting in a grave for others, God has a stand up and we go to people and touch them to bring them back to life. Wow. Wow. Think about this logically. Oh, you need scripture. 
All right, go to the book of Acts. Come on. Let's go to Acts chapter 3. Man of God, it sound right, but I need scripture. I ain't mad at you. Let's go. Acts chapter 3, verse 1 going down. What does it say? Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they had laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. Peter fashioned his eyes upon him with John and, and said, Look on us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something of them. But watch this. Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give to thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Are you hearing this? But wait, there's more. You ready for it? And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. How many times in the Bible do you hear about the laying on of hands? Did not the Lord Jesus Christ lay hands on people? You go to everywhere from the New Testament back to the Old Testament. All through there, there is the laying on of hands. Why though? I mean, it's up to you. Do you want me to go through a bunch more scriptures on the laying on of hands? Or do you, do you get what I'm saying to you? I, I'll give you a few to write down. Is that fair enough? Numbers 27, read the whole chapter, particularly about the 15th verse, moving forward about the laying on of hands, Deuteronomy 34, uh, verse 9. Uh, I want you to go to Mark chapter 10, verse 16, Luke chapter 4, verse 40, Acts chapter 8, verse 17, Acts chapter 6, verse 6, Acts chapter 28, verse 8, and it goes on and on. 1 Timothy 4.14, 2 Timothy 1.6, Paul says, by the laying on of hands. No, no, we need to go to that. We need to go to that. Hold on. Come on, let's go. We're going to do 1 and 2 Timothy uh, scriptures real quick. We're going to read them. Okay, I'm trying to get y'all back to that banquet hall now. I'm trying to get you there now. Just be patient. Don't be fast forwarding. Don't play your waiter now. I'm your waiter. I'm here to serve you. Got your plate. Okay, we're going to enjoy this meal real quick. Can I get an amen? Chapter 4, verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy with the laying on of hands of the presbytery. Do you see what I'm saying? Go to 2 Timothy real quick, verse uh, chapter 1, verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. You see this? So there's some awesome, amazing mystery here that we're just trying to tap into. Can I get an amen? That the anointing is, it resides in the bones and it emanates from there. You see? So by the laying on of hands, that power from the bone spread and goes into the person and power is given to them to be healed or whatever the case be. Oh, this is a good one. We got to we got to do it. We got to do it. Luke chapter 13. I love this because it's it's a clear it's clear evidence that the power of Christ, okay? The resurrecting power of Christ. Can I get an amen? Chapter 13 verse 13. It says and he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. You see that? This is amazing because what you have to realize is her there was an infirmity with her spine it bowed there was a problem with the spine and I just got to say it you remember when we talked about at the conference the video you're watching um, how God gave the revelation about the bones of the Messiah right that his anointing in his bones his bones could not be broken and we're seeing all of these amazing revelations about jesus christ right that 
30 years is where the bones meet their maximum strength. He started his ministry at the age of 30 and there's 24 ribs, you know, there's 24 elders and you already, a lot of those revelations have been around for a long time. Praise God. But think about this logically. Did you know that your spine, your spinal column there, right? Your vertebrae is exactly 33. Now, whether that can shift or change for people, sometimes they merge, but there's no denying that. It just so happens to be that scholars say that he his ministry was about three years, which is 33. And think about this logically. Think of the spine. Think of the vertebrae. Think of what the spine has within it. It is what connects the the, the the stem of the brain. This is what connects the brain to the entire body through the spinal cord that speaks to the whole body and how Jesus Christ is our connection to God the Father. At the head of the woman is the man. At the head of the man is Christ. And at the head of Christ is God. And how he is our spinal cord. He's our spine. He's our vertebrae. 33. He connects us to God the Father. The head. I can't. I'm about to do enough. I'm about to walk away. Yeah. I'm about to. Y'all about to go back to this conference video. I don't know how much I can handle it. This is amazing. But what if I told you that the, the vertebrae, the spine is made of five different parts. Okay. Some of y'all caught it. Some of y'all didn't. You ever heard of the five ministry positions in the gospel? Five-fold, they call it, right there on the screen. You think that's coincidence? Should we do the walk away together? Let's, let's just do Come on, come on. Look, come on. Y'all got to y'all gotta stop, man. I got things I got to get done. You got to go back to the conference video, get the prayer finished. Let's just go ahead with it, though. So her spine was healed. That bone, by the touching of Jesus Christ, laying his hands on her, that anointing straightened up. The crooked ways were made straight. Can I get an amen? So now we're recapping. We're starting to find out, wow. When we died to self, when we died to the world, and we spiritually fell into that tomb, we touched the, the body of Jesus Christ, we touched his bones, we received his anointing, we rose from the dead. The Bible says, awake thou that sleepest and rise from the dead, and Jesus Christ shall give thee light. Where is he going to put that light? That bone marrow. He going to put the light in your bones. He going to put that fire in your bones. And you're going to be that exceedingly great army prophesied in Ezekiel. The valley of the dry bones. But this time you walk around dead to the world. And the people that you touch that are in agreement. That anointing will fall on them and transfer to their bones. Can I get an amen? That healing power will start to work in their life. You go to them. huh? You bring the tomb to them. You bring the grave to them. And say it's time for you to die to yourself. It's time to, for you to die to the world. And it's time for you to die daily. I live but not I. But Christ lives in me the Bible says. Come on. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. I would love to stay on that. That alone is an hour's worth. But we're going to leave it at that. It's enough. I just wanted to do enough. To stir you up in the name of Jesus Christ of that. To stir you up. To get you excited. To know how special you are. God wants to put his power in your bones. Are you praying? Are you fasting? Do you read the word? Are you forsaking the assembling of yourselves together? Are you fellowshipping? Are you showing the Lord that you want that fire to be shut up in your bones? Were they not in the upper room? Did not the fire of the Holy Ghost go into them? Where do you think the fire went? It was shut up in their bones and it was emanated through their entire being. Finally, okay, I'm trying to get through this as quick as I can. I want to discuss with you the glorified body of Jesus Christ. And what I believe is a mystery so deep that I was a little bit hesitant to tell y'all because I'm still enjoying the meal myself, okay? And this is a very rare revelation, so I'm very excited to give it to you. I want us to go to 1 Corinthians 15, okay? Let's go there. 
it gets real deep. So, you know, Paul, you know, he did say, you know, it's some a lot of things that he would love, love to show us, but we're, we weren't ready for it. Christ let us know that. Even Peter talked about Paul's letters, how they were very meaty. You know, they were very strong, hard to be understood by certain people. But you read the whole chapter on your own time. I want us to go down to about 31 going down. It says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I die daily. You see that? Why? The only way Paul could be a blessing to pass the anointing onto other people, not necessarily the same anointing that he had, but the anointing in his bones to bring power to people, to bring the healing, to raise the dead, to make the blind eye see, all, and, and so on and so on, and to pass gifts. And to pass certain amounts of the anointing within the bones of Paul the Apostle. He had to be a dead person every single day. Because the only way to keep those bones anointed with the fire of God is to die daily. Are you catching this? This is life changing, y'all. I mean, it would be... A big disappointment if this video was about exposing the Skull and Bones Society. Like... Isn't this much better to know this? <laughs> I love it. So let's go ahead. Now we're seeing why he has to die daily. And after the manner of men, I have fought with beasts at Ephesus. I, I thought man isn't called beast in the Bible. For you YouTubers that are not teachers, you're inspirational you give inspirational videos, but you're not a teacher. You think you know what you're talking about, and you really don't. You need to repent. You need to repent. You've been puffed up, and you pretend to be humble. But all glory to be to all glory be to Jesus Christ. So clearly, he wasn't fighting against bears in the wilderness. But I want to fast forward. I want you to. You know what? Mm. Let's read it. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Why? Did not we find out that sin resides in the bones? I don't know how true it is. Don't hold me to this. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I am a servant of the Most High God. I was told that even the sperma, the seed of men that have laid down with women, it gets trapped in their bones, the DNA of men. Ladies, what this means is you have to pray. Not only all y'all got to renounce any time you've done a wishbone ritual, tooth fairy rituals, and all of those rituals, but you got to ask the Lord to purify your bones from the DNA of all those fornicating partners you done laid down with. Ask the Lord to purify your bones. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's get back to this now. Okay, where we at? Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Watch this now. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And what body do they come? Become, right? Thou fool, thou which, that which thou sowest is not quickened, except it die. You see, fall into the tomb. Remember, the dead body fell into the tomb of the prophet. And that which thou sawest, thou saw not. That body that shall be but bare grain, it may change of wheat or of some other grain. Oh, this is so exciting. But God giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. But there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, another of birds. There are also celestial bodies. Those are heavenly bodies, right? And bodies terrestrial. Those are human beings. That's why they call 
so-called aliens extraterrestrial but they're really just inter interdimensional beings demonic these fallen angels these so-called ufos and all of that they're demonic entities they're of a celestial kind you see extraterrestrial is what they call it in the world but they they into them they travel interdimensionally i ain't gonna get into that and blessed be the lord for sending us his holy angels the celestial angels of the lord amen and what's interesting is god says that he changes his angels into spirits and his ministers into a flame of fire that means that angels can change into another this is amazing right here y'all it says there are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial but the glory of the celestial is one and the glory of the terrestrial is another there is one glory of the sun and another glory of the moon another glory of the stars from one star differs from another star in glory so also is the resurrection of the dead it is sown in corruption it is raised in incorruption it is sown in dishonor it is raised in glory it is sown in weakness it is raised in power it is sown a natural body it is raised a spiritual body and that's what we're going to talk about right now there is a natural body and there is a spiritual body and so it is written the first man Adam was made a living soul the last Adam Jesus Christ was made where am I at I just lost my spot a quickening spirit how be it that was not first which is spiritual but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual the first man is of the earth earthy the second man is the Lord from heaven. Oh, this is so amazing. And this is probably one of the deepest chapters Paul has ever wrote. It gets overlooked. It's, it's a shame. Look what it says now. As in the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. As in the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly now this i say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god neither doth corruption inherit in corruption so he had to let it be known because you know there's always pharisees trying to twist things and try to misquote men of god it happens now on youtube as y'all probably know but the reality is paul had to let it be known i'm not talking about this flesh and blood we will be changed right but look at this watch this oh this is so good for hold on now behold i show you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality pause this is so much y'all so paul is so he's trying his best to show us and break down this mystery as as much as he can because people can't handle a certain level so he's he's showing us that there are celestial bodies there are terrestrial bodies they're not the same and i started to meditate on this and i'm like well wait pause I remember in the letter of John. I want you to go to 1 John with me. Right? 1 John. We're not really done in Corinthians, but I'll go back there in a minute. I just want to show y'all something. In 1 John, right? It says here in chapter 3, verses 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. What does that mean? We shall change and be like him. That doesn't amaze you? That doesn't fascinate you? Or are you more fascinated with secret societies and why witches use bones to do curses? Come on now, what is in your heart? What is the desire of your heart? It's okay to want to know and expose what the enemy does. That's wise. The Bible commands us to expose evil. But what is your thirst and hunger for? Is, the, is it to know knowledge? 
of what the enemy does? Are you idolizing that? Or do you want to know these mysteries about Christ? You're going to have to back up for that one. Wow. So our bodies shall change. We shall be like him. I want you to go to Philippians. Just real quick now. Chapter 3. Chapter 3. Imagine that. Look at what it says now. Why am I turning pages one at a time? Oh, because I got my finger in the other one. So chapter 3, verse 21. Listen now, 20 actually. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look to the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working thereby, whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto him. What? Change our bodies? Romans 8, read it on your own time, verse 17 as well. So now we got to talk about this now. We got to go back to Corinthians. Paul is talking about Jesus Christ. He came to the earth. A body was prepared for him. There's a mystery here. Y'all better get ready for this now. What was the difference? We see the supernatural, but there was a, a limit that Jesus Christ only wanted to get to and reach while he was uh, first on the earth and he didn't die yet and rise from the dead. Remember when he was transfigured in Matthew 17? Clearly, this is a supernatural event. But really, you read that on your own time. You probably know what I'm talking about. But I want to talk about what was this supernatural change with Christ. When he did his amazing prayer in John, when he spoke to the Father, and he talked about the glory that he had in the beginning, right? But God don't share his glory with none, right? So clearly, we know that Jesus Christ is the Almighty, this, this I got to take a moment like can, can I you got a, a tea with you or something because this is amazing this revelation this right here could be a three and a half hour teaching the fact I'm rushing this not literally rushing too fast but I'm definitely shortening it so you can finish up the the conference aspect of the message but what changed what did Jesus actually do? You know, the Bible talks about the tearing down of the wall, right? And we know there's one about the Jew and the Greek, right? But could there be one? I can't do it yet. I can't do it yet. Wow. Wow. Okay. Let's go. Let's go. So all through the scripture, you see these supernatural things happening. In John chapter 20. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Pause. In Corinthians, let's just finish this up now. So Paul is talking about he's sown. Watch this now. Just watch. It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It is raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. This is what Jesus Christ had to do. He, as the seed, was sown to produce the crop, which is us. I, oh, come on. Come on, y'all. I gotta go. I gotta go. This is amazing. This is amazing. He took upon our sin. Right? Think about what I'm saying. Think of the shame when he hung on the cross. Think of all that he took upon. He took our shame to the cross. He took our dishonor to the cross. He took all of that to the cross. And was buried with it. Come on. Talk to me. And rose in glory. Rose in corruptible. Rose in honor. Rose. Oh, come on. Come on. Come on. So we know he knew he had no sin. We know that he himself was pure and blameless. But he took upon our dishonor. He took upon. You see. This is phenomenal. So now, go to John. I want you to go to John. Now, chapter 20. Verse 14, I want to say. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. How is this possible? These are people that walked with Jesus for some years, three years. 
How does she not recognize him? <laughs> Go to Luke chapter 24. This one right here, man. This is phenomenal. Watch this. Luke chapter 24. Are y'all enjoying this? Are you happy now that I snatched you out your conference seat? Don't worry. You'll have that seat in a minute, okay? I needed you to be translated to the dinner table. Can I get a name, man? Let's go. Luke 24, uh, verse 24 going down. And a certain of them which were with us went to the tomb and found it even as the woman had said, but said they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. I ain't going to lie, y'all. I got a godly jealousy with that. I mean, I hope the disciples appreciated God Almighty in his glorified body. Like, what? Having a dinner table message with them. Going through the scriptures and showing them where he is spoken of. Where he's hidden in the scriptures. I hope they appreciated it. Because I got some godly jealousy over that. I don't know how y'all feel about this situation. But that is amazing. And... So he went through the scriptures to show him about himself. They drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Stay with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is far spent. And he went into tarry with them. I love the fact that Jesus Christ the Almighty is very, like, merciful. You know what I mean? Like, he was trying to go do his own thing, whatever that was. He really was testing them. But... They were like, no, 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 come on, man, just, they didn't recognize it was him, just, y'all need to realize this, but their spirit man connected with him, and they're like, oh, don't go, please stay with us, we want you to be with, and he was like, all right, all right, yeah, all right, get the sleeping bag ready, we about to have an all-nighter, let's go, you know what I mean, would you, would you tell Jesus to come over your house and spend the night? Imagine what that would be like. How fun would that be, huh? Be up all night. Can I get an amen? Just going through the scriptures and talking about all types of mysteries. And all right, all right. I'm like a little child in a candy shop right now. My wife got me this cup. And I got to tell you, this is going to be a problem. Because I have a tendency of sipping tea more than a bottle of water. So I've been sipping about eight times since I've been on this video with y'all. You like, man of God, you need to just chill out with your tea. It's hibiscus with some manuka honey, if you need to know, okay? But I love what it says. A wise teacher makes learning a joy. Proverbs 15, 2. How amazing is that? Shout out to my amazing wife. I love you, sweetheart. So, boom. Let's go ahead here. Let's go ahead. So, now, let's fast forward because I got sidetracked with the tea convo. Why don't y'all straighten me out now? Come on. Say, man of God, stay focused. It says, And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. Now watch this. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and then he vanished out of their sight. So at this moment, he blesses. There's something supernatural about that communion, I'm trying to tell you. And as soon as they ate the bread... Their eyes open and they realize, wait a minute, this is Jesus. This is Yeshua. This is the Son of God in front of us. And boom, he's gone. How? How has he got what appears to be a flesh and blood body, but yet is able to move and operate like a spirit? I, I, uh, look, look, I, I don't know, y'all. I can't, I can't do this much longer. This is so strong right now. Listen to this carefully. Boom. He vanished out of their sight. That doesn't mean like he was like, look, what's that? And then snuck out the door. He literally just vanished. Okay. And if people that try to tell you that's not what it means, they just don't have eyes to see yet. That's all that means. Their minds are like carnal. They can't believe in the supernatural. 
right? They try to say, well, Jesus walking on the water was not literal. It was a, it was an allegory or some word like that, but it was literal. Jesus really literally walked on the water. Peter literally got off the boat and walked on the water. There was a spiritual meaning behind it, but it literally happened. Jesus Christ of Nazareth literally vanished right before their eyes. This is amazing. And they said one to another, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us, by the way, and while he opened to us the scripture? Because he's a consuming fire. You imagine that. They're at a dinner table with the almighty God of heaven and earth in his glorified body. I can't handle this. Wow. And it just, the fire in his bones is starting to burn in their bones. <laughs> okay, all right, I get it. Let's finish this up. Did not our hearts burn within us? And remember in Jeremiah, it starts with the heart. Then he says, a fire in my bones. Remember that? There's that comparison. And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things that were done in the way and how he was known of them in the breaking of bread. And as they thus spoke, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Wait a minute. How does he just appear in the midst of them? Think of the word play here. But they were terrified and affrighted and supposed that they had seen a spirit. That's how you know it wasn't like he just opened the door and was like, peace be unto you. No, he appeared to them. It was like, peace, my children, peace to you. Because he knew them. They're going to be afraid. Think of the wordplay. Why would they think it's a spirit? Because he, Jesus Christ did something. Y'all about to see what I've been meditating on for a while. And God integrated it into this message. It's so phenomenal and fascinating. Just prepare yourself. That's all I'm going to say. Watch this now. Wow. This is so good. I'll, real quick before we continue, stay in Luke uh, 24. I just want to show you something in John to bring them together. In John 21 verse 4. I just want to show you something in John. In John chapter 20, verse 19, right? It says, In the same day as the evening being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews, um, many translations will accurately say the doors were locked, okay? Because they were afraid. I mean, look, they weren't perfect yet. They're striving to be perfect. They had a little bit of fear. They didn't want to go to jail or die or, you know, everyone has their growing process, right? But look at this. For the fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said, peace be unto you. How did he just appear? He had the power to go through walls. Like, wait, pause. But wait, when you bring it back to Luke now. The same thing happens. He says, peace be unto them. He appears to them supernaturally. But they were terrified. They thought they seen a spirit. Verse 38. And he said unto them, why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? So he could even hear their thoughts, right? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I, myself. Handle me and see for a spirit have not flesh and bones as you see me have. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they yet believed not for joy, he wondered and he said unto them, Do you have any food? Right? So here he is. So graceful, so merciful. They're still struggling to believe. Because, I mean, he's operating like a spirit. He's coming, he's appearing, he's disappearing, he's vanishing himself. Uh, Mary, he appears to Mary. He, he appears in a different form where she doesn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him, but yet they walked with him for three years. He had this, this almost, 
Think about it this way. There was no limit to his body now. Where when he was put in a body that was prepared for him, right? There were certain limits that he would not pass as flesh and blood. That's why Hebrews talks about how he felt the struggle as we would. When he fasted, he felt the pain as we would, right? I mean, think about this logically. He walked and talked and moved as a man, but yet almighty God. Ah, oh, man. You about to see a mystery. Glory be to God. Give all the glory to Jesus Christ. He deserves it. Amen. Now listen to this. Watch this now. Have you any meat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and a honeycomb and he took it and did eat it before them. <laughs> so think about this logically now. Jesus Christ could move and operate as a spirit, go through walls, appear in a room and disappear. But yet you could touch him at the same time though. He did tell them, hey, look, you don't believe me? Touch, touch my hands, look at my feet. He could take a piece of fish and eat it. And a physical piece of fish, they took off the frying pan and gave it to him. Broiled, all right, whatever, you know, thank you for the correction ahead of time in the comment section. <laughs> it wasn't fried, man of God, the Lord knew better. He didn't want to eat the fat. No, you better chill, okay? I think the Lord would enjoy some fish and chips, okay? That's uh, just my personal opinion. But yes, it was broiled. Thank you for the correction ahead of time. So he ate this broiled fish. And it, it went into his belly though. How is this possible? What is this? Either your spirit or your flesh and blood now. Yes or no? It's fire in my bones. Got me sweating up in here. Hallelujah. Glory be to Christ. I'm just, I'm just amazed. I, I don't know how I'm going to do this, Lord. Help me to say this to your children. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to say it. So as I was meditating on this, and I thought of the wall that was broken down between Jew and Greek. Well, really, Jew and Gentile, really. I thought of other walls that broke down. This is the mystery now. Y'all better catch this. What if, okay, what if in Mark chapter 10, verse 8, in Ephesians chapter 5, in Genesis chapter 2, when it talks about man and woman becoming one flesh, oh, you better catch this. They too are no longer two, but now one. And even in Genesis, that word is echad, a literal one. They become one. Now, in our natural sense, a husband and wife don't like, you know, unite physically together and we're like stuck to each other, but we're one, right? What if, okay, this is a what if moment now. All I'm asking you to do is just meditate with me. I want you to, I want you to experience what I be thinking about when I'm in the presence of the Lord and I'm. I'm like a child in a, in a toy store, just excited over just thinking of these amazing revelations of Jesus Christ. I want you to ask yourself, could it be possible? You're probably going to want to do the walk away with me in, 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 a, in a minute. Could it be possible that the same way God had man and woman when they married they became one flesh right could it be possible that jesus christ god almighty came to the earth and merged with a human vessel and became one and this is the ah oh that's strong that is strong right there and this is the mystery that so many can't comprehend, right? Whether in Islam and other things and you say he's God, but yet this or he was a man and this and that. They don't understand this mystery that Jesus Christ was fully man and fully God. But we know that 
he gave the glory to God the Father. He was in his earthly position at that moment. He was born and walked and talked and breathed as a man. And again, that's a whole, I can't really get too deep into that. How he, he, he gained back his powers. He went through the miracles and manifested and increased in favor with God and man. And there was a certain, uh, I'm not going to do that right now. But what I want to focus on is there was the marrying. When Jesus became one. When the Spirit of Christ, when the Word of God became one with a body prepared. Okay, let's go one step deeper. Are y'all ready for it? Are y'all ready? When Jesus Christ was sown and rose from the dead, when he died and was buried, when he rose from the dead, he actually started a new race y'all better follow this now a creation where our bodies it's like he took human flesh and blood and spirit right a spiritual body and made them become one flesh to where now it isn't flesh and blood. Because remember, flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of heaven. And Paul was trying to break this down. I believe we're tapping into what Paul was really wanting to say. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That this terrestrial body and celestial body. What Jesus Christ did was when he died and rose from the dead. He merged and be made them become one. Like marrying. He married the celestial and terrestrial together. And a new body was created. Wow. But this isn't flesh and blood. Like us. Like a human body. It was not allowed in heaven. This is a new glorified body. It's a body that can grab things like flesh and blood. It can eat fish and hold it in the body like flesh and blood. It can drink a cup like flesh and blood. Or it can disappear like a spirit. Are you seeing it now? Wow! <laughs> like what? I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. I'm not saying blood and guts and bones is now swirled with a spirit and we're a new being no 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 what I'm saying is he created a new way for us he is giving us a glorified body that can move and operate as a spirit being a spirit body but tangibly grab things as well like a physical body he married the two and they became one. Think of this. This is another mystery and this is another teaching. I really don't want to give it to you, but I'm just going to do it. When God Almighty brings heaven to the earth, New Jerusalem, there is a marrying of the new heaven and new earth to become one. I'm not going to do it, y'all. I got to go. Look, I hope you enjoyed this brief dinner table message we could have went so much deeper with it i just wanted to stir you up are you excited like i am because i am ecstatic right now just knowing about this glorified body no wonder jesus christ could walk through a wall and then have some broiled fish now hopefully with me he'll enjoy a fish sandwich can i get an amen with some tomato tartar sauce pickles lettuce toasted bun you know what i'm saying my king, I hope to have a fish sandwich with one day. Okay, you can have broiled fish with him if you want. Okay, but I'm hoping me and him can dig into a fried fish sandwich. Okay, but that's neither here nor there. My point is, is could this be possible? 
that it wasn't just a wall broken down between Jew and, and Gentile, but there was a wall broken down between the flesh and the spirit. There was a wall broken down. And when he was sown in corruption, he was raised in incorruption. He brought that sin to the cross. Even though he never sinned. This is amazing. He destroyed the beast to the cross. But yet he himself was never a beast. You see? Are you starting to see it now? And this is why the, the mind of Pharisees that are utterly cold and numb can't comprehend messages like this. And try to mock because they mock that which is holy, the Bible says. They speak evil of the things they know not, the Bible says. I'm, I'm we love y'all. Be on the lookout for more messages. Uh, it's worse than you think part two. is. It should be out soon, Lord willing. Help spread these messages. You have a responsibility to help spread this food to as many as you can. We love y'all so much. I'm going to stop right there even though it goes deeper. I hope you get what I'm trying to say to you now. I'm not saying flesh and blood. I'm saying a new glorified body that can move between a spirit body and a, a physical body. Whether it, it's able to turn on and off, I don't know. We'll find out. But he can turn his angels into spirits. What can he do for us? What can he turn us into? Oh, I'm done. Love y'all. Gotta go. I hope you enjoy the rest of the video and do the prayer at the end. In Jesus Christ's name, bless. But it's symbolic. It's spiritual. That if you want the resurrection power of Christ, you first gotta die and fall into the grave. You gotta die to self. You gotta die to the world. And, 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 and it's a process too. But once you're fully dead, and they drop you into that pit. As soon as you hit the bones of Christ, you're back up. Hallelujah. As a new creature. Hallelujah. 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 Say, Father God. Father God. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. Thank, you Thank you for your word. Thank you for your message. Lord Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ. The life you've given me. It's in my blood, which is produced by my bones. Say, Lord Jesus Christ, fill me with your word. Shut your fire in my bones. Preserve your fire in my skeleton, in every bone in my body, that I may be an exceedingly great army. Speak to me. Raise me up. Fill me with everything. All the muscles. And everything else. Holy Spirit. Move upon me. I want to be in your, in your army. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke. And I remove. All sin from my bones. All rottenness from my bones. Everything unclean in my bones come out now in Jesus Christ's name. I receive the fire of God to travel through my bones. Lord, put your oil in my bones. In the name of Jesus Christ, I reject the broken spirit. The blood of Jesus has made me whole. Therefore, dry bones are not allowed here. Activate me in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I receive your strength in my bones. Health in my bones. And the fire of the Holy Ghost. Shut up in my bones. In the name of Jesus Christ. That I walk around dead to the world dead to myself and anyone that I touch anyone that I touch will activate and resurrect in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah I got one more
before you end up saying it. Well, what you got? <laughs> uh, Let me cover my mic. Just I was talking about Hebrews when he said. Let me read it. Can Go I ahead. Read, read, it, read it. Read it. Read it. What's me now, bro? Where a testament is, there must be also the necessity of the death of the testator, right? Mm. The, the Bible says in Hebrews that to get the power of a testimony, the one must die first before it becomes forceful in life. I want to give you one more. Because y'all been faithful to get here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This was amazing. I was trying to figure it out because you got to be careful what you say about the Lord. Sometimes you can get too deep and you mess around and say something wrong. Just you need you want to roll, you're getting all these uh, revelations, but you still got to take it to the Lord. Amen. Amen. Did y'all know that bone marrow, they say, is like a sponge? When Jesus Christ was on the I can't, y'all. I uh, Where's my curtain at? I gotta, I gotta go, y'all. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, they dipped a sponge in wine. In fact, they called it what? They called it like bitter wine or something like that. Vinegar, but translated as wine. You know, Jesus drank the, eat the bread and, huh? Gall, thank you eat the bread and drink the wine in remembrance of him. I hope you did communion. We did at home. We loved it. But I found this to be very symbolic. Not in a literal sense where Jesus drank some kind of blood and, and like that. But I just found it to be fascinating that bone marrow is like a sponge that produces blood and they dip the sponge in wine that represents blood. Like I'm done. That is so amazing. God is telling us something. These bones will live. Say it. It's time, saints of God, to be the army you're supposed to be. To rise up. And to know that God has put his life in you. And listen, yes, there's real prophets on the earth. Apostles. But let's not do, let's not do something where we... Yes, we honor prophets and apostles because God has assigned them over you, to watch over you, to rebuke you when you're wrong, to hug you when you're right. It's a balance, right? Too many Christians act like brats now. You can't even rebuke somebody without them being offended, running away, hating you, and making a video about you. But the reality is, that's why leaders are there. That's it. If, listen, the people that love you the most tell you the truth about you. But what I was saying is, yes, they're anointed on high levels, but don't ever count yourself out. Because as long as you got Jesus Christ, you got the anointing Amen. of the Messiah upon you. Amen. And see, what I left out is there's a scripture that talks about oil in the bones. You know what? No, we're going to move on to the next message. But saints of God, know this. God was trying to show us something. The reason why you have not activated is because you have not fully died to yourself. Because the minute you drop into that grave spiritually, you touch the bones. That's where Christ touches you. See, what I love about Jesus Christ is he's willing to go after people. But he also waits for you. He waits in that place you don't want to go. He waits in that grave. Quiet. Just waiting for you. And every day, and see, the devil's job is to keep you revived. And a lot of times when you go to die to the world and die to self, Satan comes as a paramedic. Like, bezel bump, give me some shot. Breathe. Breathe. She's dying. Because he don't want you to die. You understand? He don't, he don't want you to die. Don't let the world revive you. Every time you start dying, you notice that? You notice that? Yeah. Some of y'all single sisters. I mean, you was almost there. And Junebug called you when he got out of jail. <laughs> Baby girl, you know I've been doing a lot of thinking in prison. <laughs> As I was doing 300 push-ups a night, I was sweating thinking of you. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. 
See how slick the devil is? Brothers, you was almost there. Your homie called you with a pound of weed. Just, hey, bro, times are hard, right? You want to sell that? You want to smoke that? What's good? Life's hard. Just get high with me. Anything the devil can do to try to perform CPR on you to, re to keep you from dying because he knows that the minute you start dying and it's complete, you touch the bones of the lion. Hmm? And you become alive in Christ. Oh, yeah, that's on a whole nother level. Let him rot, probably. Yeah. See, thank you. All of a sudden, they care for everybody, right? Okay, saints, let's move on to the next message, amen?